Hello, welcome back. This is Naomi Terry Salgado. Um, today I'm going to be answering the question. Um, someone asked me, based on a previous video I did, what this tool is. So the quick answer is this tool is uh, calipers for finding the golden ratio. But I bet that starts all kinds of other questions. What is the golden ratio? How do you use it? Why would you use it? All these things. So in this video, I hope to answer those. And we're going to go into math and history and Greek and science and all kinds of stuff to answer this question. Hopefully you find it helpful and interesting. If not, it might get boring. I apologize. Uh, before we get into all the details, I just want to give you a quick um, summary of it. It's basically the concept that there is a perfect ratio out there that appeals to most humans that um, kind of like a universal appeal magic number. You can just use this magic ratio and all everyone will just automatically love your paintings. Um, sounds a little pie in the sky and too good to be true, but worth, definitely worth exploring and learning more about it. So that's what this video is about. That's, what I'm, that's why I'm gonna be using it in this upcoming series, the Urban Life series to explore it and see if it really works, experiment a little bit, have a little fun with this. So, Before we can really talk about what is the golden ratio, we first have to review what is a ratio. Um, a ratio is really the length of one line compared to the other line. And in this case, we're comparing this line to that line. This line is one, two, three, four, five, six boxes tall. That line is one, two, three boxes tall. So we're going to create a fraction. This over that. This is six over that is three, which equals, when you compute, two. So that was ratios. Now let's talk golden ratio. Here are different names for the golden ratio. I'll let you read them there. The most common for sure is the ratio. So here's how you draw out the golden ratio um, in visual form. And here's the mathematical equation to describe it. Um, the whole length over the longer side will equal the longer section over the shorter section. I know, super confusing. Now this equation is solvable for a number and you can find that online at Khan Academy. But the end result, I'm just gonna jump to the end result. It is 1.618 over one. This is the golden ratio. This is it folks. Now let's switch gears a little bit and leave math behind and talk about history. The ancient Greeks discovered the golden ratio. Now, it's not sure which scholar from ancient Greece did. Is it Phidias or Euclid? Now, Phidias was the sculptor and artistic mastermind behind the Parthenon. He lived in the 400s. He lived earlier than Euclid. Um, the Parthenon is a beautiful structure, and all over its design, you can see the golden ratio, the golden rectangle used in its design. So if he didn't know about it, he was very, um, had a very keen sense of design, but if he, but he may have. Now Euclid is the father of geometry. He wrote a book in 300, in the 300s BC, and it very clearly in black and white talks about the golden ratio. So for sure Euclid, um, discovered it, but Phidias may have been first, and that is why we call it phi, uh, because it's credited to Phidias. Now, Fibonacci is an Italian mathematician living in the 1200s. Um, he came up with this really cool sequence that's related to the golden ratio. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So all the knowledge of the Greeks was lost over time, and the Renaissance artists and thinkers brought it back. Leonardo was the most well-known, but many of the artists in the Renaissance period knew the golden ratio. Now let's jump to modern art. Salvador Dali intentionally used the golden ratio in 
creating some of his works. For sure, the most famous is The Sacrament of the Last Supper, made in 1955. It was painted on a golden rectangle canvas, and many of the compositional elements within it follow the golden ratio. Now let's go back to Fibonacci. Remember him, the Italian mathematician in the 1200s? He came up with a sequence of numbers that is simply beautiful and elegant just to even create and make. So 1, 1 plus 1 itself is 2. Now we take the last two numbers, add them together, we get 3. And now 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, see, super fun, super satisfying, and very elegant little number sequence. Now, what does that have to do with anything? And this can go on and on forever. Now we can turn the Fibonacci sequence into a series of ratios. So we're going to compare these two numbers and these two numbers, and these two numbers, we're gonna find the distance between each of those numbers as we go. So one over one is one. Two over one is two. Three over two is one and a half. Five over three is getting to where I need a calculator. So we're back. We've calculated out these numbers. As you can see, it goes one, two, one point five, one point six seven, one point six, one point six two five. 1.615, 1.619. First of all, the Fibonacci sequence goes on to infinity, so these ratios will go on to infinity, and as you get closer and closer to infinity, you will approach um, this number here, and this is not the end of it. 1.618033988749894848420. Keep going, keep going. This is the number phi. This is the golden ratio. So we can represent that in a picture form. So let's start by making a square that's one square big. This is what's known as a golden rectangle. A golden rectangle is a rectangle. If you cut off a square, you are left with a rectangle that has the same proportions as the original rectangle. So this part of the rectangle has the same exact proportions as this one. So of course, now you can cut off the square. And now you're left with a rectangle with the same proportions and you can cut off this square and now you have a rectangle with the same proportions you can cut off this square and you can go down to infinity now what is a golden spiral so from this corner to this corner now from here we're going to swing an arc out like that from here we're going to swing an arc from this corner to this corner swing now here's the inside corner, we're gonna go out here. Here's the inside corner, we're gonna go swing this from here to here. This, if you smooth it out, of course, would be the golden spiral. You construct an arc from the inside corner of all of these. You will find this in nature quite frequently. Snails, um, sunflower pods, things like that. So, golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence, which constructs to a golden rectangle, which constructs to a golden spiral. So I have two tools that I use to find the golden ratio. 
This calipers I showed you already. Um, I use this mostly in the studio. That's why you've seen it so far in, in these videos I've been studio painting. But when I go out uh, plein air painting, um, I use this viewfinder. And I have many ratios on this viewfinder. This bottom one is the golden ratio. So I'll show you each uh, tool separately and in, in more in detail. So I just want to show you how the calipers work. Um, no matter how um, open or closed this thing is, these things always remain in the golden ratio with each other. So this would be 1.618 compared to this being one. And that is the same whether it gets this big or this big or this big, it always remains in that same locked in ratio. 1.618 to 1. So this is a viewfinder. It helps cut off the rest of the scene. It gets rid of all the details outside of the scene. You can move it closer or further away. Um, as you can tell, my viewfinder is very dirty. I use it a lot. Um, and you can also see the etch lines that I have made on here. This right here, this point, would be the golden ratio um, point for this scene. You can also flip it over, find the left point, find the upper point on the left, find the upper point on the right. So that's how I use this viewfinder. Here we are out in the woods looking at this plant. I'm not actually sure what this plant is, but I just want to point out that the spacing of these branches are perfect golden ratio. So I was just informed by my dear friend who, that we think this is stinging nettle, but I'm okay because it's dry and so I won't like sting, but um, you can see my thumb is a golden ratio. This is actually a golden ratio. To find out the question is, is there really a pleasing ratio or not? I, I don't know. I want to kind of see, experiment. So. so going back to the concept of the ancient Greeks, um, it's my personal belief that the Greeks overused this concept. And here's why. They had a tendency to, um, in their art especially, um, in their portraiture and statues and things like that, they glorified the ideal at the expense of the real. And what I mean by that is that in their portraits, all the people kind of look the exact same because they had the vision of the ideal person would have the perfect proportions. And so they all wanted to be perfect. And so they made each person with the ideal proportions and they ended up all looking the same. Supposedly, there's a perfect uh, where faces follow the golden ratio and things like that, and that would be the ideal perfect face. Personally, I believe that God gave you the face that you have, and it is beautiful because of who you are, because of who God made you to be. And to put that kind of artificial, you have to you know, your nose has to be this far from your chin and blah, blah, blah. I think that puts a pressure on people to be something that they're not born to be. And so I probably won't take this into portraiture. I want people to, people's faces to reflect their individual person for who they are. And even in landscape painting, um, Maybe the perfect place is right here, but sometimes real life isn't perfect. And um, that's okay. So, yes, this is a compositional tool to be understood and used, but it's also to be balanced with real life and um, understand that life gets messy and uh, not perfect sometimes.